Hey, my lovely YouTubers, welcome back to my YouTube channel with me, your girl, Morgan Tracy J. Coming today with a new YouTube video that is all for my ladies out there. But before we get into this video, boo, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube family. You turn on that notification bell and you check me out over on the gram and my blog, hisdaughterscloset.com. Hey ladies, I'm having a free five day ministry challenge, how to start your ministry with no money. This comes with a guide and also every day for five days, I'm giving you ministry tips and advice and even showing you how I personally grow my very own ministry. So if you are interested in doing this boo, all you have to do is click the link in the description box below and sign up and get started on building your ministry. So let's get back into the video. Okay, boo, so today's video is all about girl, yes, you can. Today, I am coming to be a motivational coach for you for just a second, okay? Because I want you to know that girl, yes, you can. You can overcome this, you can get up, you can go get that degree, you can come back after a definitely a breakup, a breakdown, a, a fall down and all that, okay? You can, okay? And I think that's the big thing that I wanna encourage a lot of women and a lot of girls. I wanna tell you, girl, yes, you can, okay? Many times we tell ourselves we can't, right? I have said that many, many, seasons. I can't be successful until I'm married. I can't do certain things because I didn't come from a Christian background. I would say tell, to myself, oh, I can't talk about purity and faith because look where I came from. I, I didn't do it right, right? I would tell myself things I could not do when the whole time God was saying, girl, yes, you can. And I want to tell you right now, yes, you can get up from that place. Yes, you can get up from depression. Yes, you can beat down the things that have been trying to beat you down. I want to tell you, yes, you can, girl. And so I'm going to give you some tips today on how you can actually do it, okay? But before we get even all the way into the tips, I want you to comment down below, yes, I can. You gotta get that built up in your spirit that you can accomplish what God has put you on this earth to do, that you can do and live a life that God has called you to live. You have to do that. So comment that down below and I'm gonna get into these tips for you. The first tip, girl, is you gotta take action. I know this sounds crazy. You're like, hold on, on what? No, no, no. You probably already know the things you need to be taking action on and improving your life. So for example, there are certain things I know personally that God has called me to take action on and improve my life. So for seasons there, I was definitely depressed. I have a lot of anxiety and guess what? God showed me specific things to do to help me in that season. So that meant take better care of yourself. Quit neglecting you. Quit neglecting your cup. Make sure you are overflowing, right? Make sure you're getting filled up with things that inspire you and things that you love. See, so the first thing is boo, you have gotta take action for yourself, okay? You gotta fill up your cup. You gotta make sure you are working on you. Take massive action now. Don't say on Monday or in a few weeks. No, no, no. If you need to just buy you a journal and say, I'm going to start prayer journaling. I'm going to start journaling about my better version. I'm going to start journaling about the things that I need to see moved in my life. Girl, I don't know. Just take action. And the next thing is we got to talk about it, boo. You've got to get into your holy hustle. You see, I don't know why we sometimes in the Christian community, we think like, we get lackadaisy once we get saved. I definitely was like this. I kind of just thought God was just going to give me everything I ever wanted and that I didn't have to really work for it. When growing up, I realized that my mama could make something out of nothing, right? Like when we were struggling with food, my mom could go in the kitchen, put some things together and we would have a full meal, right? She was on a hustle. She knew she could take little and do something a lot with it. Like God can take our little and do much. I want you to get on your holy hustle too. I want you to take that little that you have in your life, that little bit of faith, that little bit of gift, that little bit of idea, that little bit of passion and make a hustle out of it, boo. Get on your holy hustle. I feel like in the world, like growing up, I, I knew about hustling. I knew about people having to hustle and make things work. I've watched my mama hustle. I watch people have to think, make things out of nothing, make something stretch, make their money stretch the whole week, make their food stretch. I remember those things. I want to tell you what happens now when if you got a little bit, boo, you can make that thing stretch. Okay. If you got a little bit of faith, make that thing stretch. You got a little bit of a gift, make that thing stretch. I want to tell you, I used to only only know one scripture. I only had one scripture, but girl, I made that thing one scripture stretch. I built a whole ministry off of that one scripture. I made that thing stretch. I only had one gift at one time. It was just speaking. I made that thing stretch and eventually opened up doors to multiple gifts. I want to tell you, boo, get on your holy hustle. Start taking what little bit you do have and start hustling that thing and making it stretch. Make something out of nothing. And that's something our God does. He will take something like us, like me, a broken woman, a broken girl, a shattered insecure, everything, depressed, anxious, 
and he'll make something out of that nothing, okay? I wanna encourage you, don't get discouraged because you don't have everything you think you need to get started and get things going. No, no, boo, you gotta get on your holy hustle. Like, I, I realized, like, my mama did that all the time. And it's now my turn to do it. I got to get on my holy hustle just because I didn't have the camera or I don't got the lights or I don't got this or, I, oh, Morgan don't got the new lens yet. So I can't. Do, no, boo, you can do. You can still work with what you got. You got something. Get on your holy hustle. The next thing is stop grabbing on low fruit, okay? They say low hanging fruit. That's what I'm saying is stop believing just the things that you always believed. It's time to raise your belief. It's time to go higher. So for example, if you always seen a dysfunctional relationship and you keep getting into dysfunctional relationships, it's because that's where your belief is. You have not raised your standards to a new level. So for example, I went out to look for a car not too long ago and I realized that the cars that I was looking at, it was below standard. Like even though I was looking at them and they were okay, they were below the standard that I had for myself. I mean, they would get me from A to B, but I don't know if they would get me from A to Z. Do you know what I'm saying? See, I feel like my standard was above just getting me to A to B. I need to get from A to Z. I want this thing to provide for me. I want this longevity. See, I want to tell you, if I just grabbed the low hanging fruit, I would have had a car from A to B, but God wants to get you set up so well that he gets you from A to Z. You see, I want to tell you what happens is sometimes our beliefs allow us to take what the world gives us. Oh, the world wants to give me that, then I'll take it. However, what happens is if when you get a belief, you say, no, 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 that's too, that's below me. I'm not taking that relationship. I'm not taking that toxic relationship. I'm not taking that right there. I'm not taking that. And I'm going to go offer what God has for me. And I am not going to pull on low hanging fruit anymore. Boo, I want to tell you, girl, yes, you can. You can raise your standards. You can have higher standards for yourself and for your life. Don't let anybody or even your upbringing or your past or what you see every day tell you you cannot. So when you start building up your standards, what happens is everything else has to come up. That's just honesty. I remember when I began to build up my standards with men, certain men couldn't even approach me anymore. And when they would try to, I'd be like, ooh, sorry, boo-boo, like you, you know. See, I wanna just encourage you to build up your standards, boo. There's nothing wrong with that. Build your standards. The next tip, boo, is encourage yourself, okay? Literally, yourself. Encourage yourself. You know, I've been saying this since like 2015, boo. Be your number one cheerleader. And that is my encouragement to you, is boo, you need to be your number one cheerleader. You see, many times we are waiting on God to give us a word. We're waiting on a prophet to come to our church and tell us something. I wanna tell you, why, does, why do we always wait on that when God already gave us the gift of tongue? He already gave us the gift of speaking life, changing our atmospheres. I wanna encourage you, boo, to be your number one cheerleader. You don't need a new prophetic word. You don't need a new revelation. What you need is to begin to speak the word that God has already told you. You need to begin to believe that. You need to begin to encourage yourself in that word. See, I mean, years ago, God would tell me things and I could not believe it, but then I would begin to speak it. Oh, you're going to be an international empowerment speaker. You're going to travel all over the world and empower God's daughters. You're going to build a, you're going to build a ministry that is going to be so massive and it's going to help so many people. Some of that stuff hasn't even came into fruition yet, guys, but I still speak that bad boy. And I want to encourage you to be your number one cheerleader because that means if nobody supports you your mama your brother your family your cousins up the block if no one supports you it don't matter because you're already clapping so loud for yourself they're gonna have to look eventually i want to encourage you don't get discouraged because no one supports you they just haven't seen enough results yet so be willing to put in the work do the background work for your vision and for your dream and be your number one cheerleader boo these are all great right these are great tips you're fired up but we gotta talk about life's obstacles because we are going to encounter life's obstacles, but it depends on how we look at them to see what it's gonna do to us. I ain't gonna lie, there are so many obstacles that I face every few weeks, every few months, obstacles I face and I'm like, how are we gonna get over this hurdle? How am I gonna get over this hurdle, right? I wanna tell you though, what happens is many times when we see a life obstacle or things aren't, life isn't going quite the way we want it to go, we become depressed and we become anxious. And what happens is we begin to feel like our life is nothing. Our life is pointless. We are behind. We are stuck. And guess what? All it is, is all the real reason is, is life isn't going the way you thought it should go. Okay? But the truth is, I want to tell you, God wastes nothing. God wastes nothing. And just because life isn't going the way you think that it should go does not mean that life is not going. It doesn't mean that you're not still growing and moving forward and evolving. It does not mean that. And so I remember years ago, I was stuck at my parents' house. I felt like life, I felt like I was stuck. I felt like, God, why? I was depressed. I was anxious. But it was all because life didn't go the way I wanted it to go at that time. You see, I seen myself living on my own, making my own money, having a degree. I seen myself doing all these other things. But in the meantime, I'm sitting here and I was depressed because life didn't go the way I wanted it to go. I want to tell you, 
There were times I was building the wrong ministry that ended up helping me build the right ministry. There were times I was on the wrong path that ended up getting me to a right path that blessed my life so much. There were times I felt like I was sitting down stuck and couldn't move, but actually that was a season that was building me up so I could move forward. I want to tell you the times that we feel ourselves depressed and anxious, it's not really based off of ourselves. What it's based off of, guys, is we think life ain't going the way we want it to go. When you feel like life isn't going the way you want it to go, what you do is you rest. You know, they say for depressed, that means deep rest. You rest in God. You trust the journey. You breathe in him. You bask in him and you fall back in love with the journey. Don't get caught up on the destination. Fall in love with the journey because in the journey is where the real beauty lies. Girl, yes, you can. You can do it. You can get up from those places and you can accomplish what you've been put on this earth to do. So that's my encouragement for you ladies. I hope this inspired you and encouraged you. If you're interested in ministry, I wanna encourage you to click the link in the description box. I'm having a free five day challenge that shows you how to build a ministry with no money. I'll see you guys in my next video. I love you so much. Make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you later. Bye guys. Gosh, one thing about bodysuits and being a curvy woman.